Here's a typical high dynamic range scene. This is a composition that's pretty common in landscape photography. This is a pre-dawn or a sunrise scene. The sun's just starting to come over the horizon back there. The dynamic range, or the range between the darkest and the brightest points in this scene, is about 14 to 15 stops of light. Now modern DSLR cameras can record somewhere between 9, 10, maybe 11 stops, uh, depending on the sensor design. Now if your scene contains 15 stops of light, but your camera can only record about 10, no matter what you do with the camera all by itself, something isn't going to be exposed properly. Either something's going to be overexposed or something's going to be underexposed. Exposure blending is a great tool to help combat high dynamic range and help fix this problem. Now in order to do this procedure, you need to take at least two images. In the case here, I've exposed the upper left one for the sky or the bright area of the scene. This particular one is just shows you all the colors and everything and the detail in the sky. The sky is exposed properly. This is my first image. My second image is exposed for the darker areas, the areas around the dock. The, that foreground area is exposed properly in this image. Now the term exposure blending is exactly that. We're going to take these two images, we're going to merge them together, blend in a good sky with a good foreground, and arrive at a scene that has a higher dynamic range than the camera could capture all by itself. My name is Jeff. I'm going to show you how to do this in Photoshop. All right, back at the computer now. I've got both of my images I have did in the field up on the screen here in Photoshop uh, version CS6. Uh, I'm using Photoshop for the tutorial. If you do not have Photoshop, that's fine. The only thing that your software package needs is it has to have the ability to create layers and also the ability to work with layer masks. If your package has both of those capabilities, it'll work just as fine as Photoshop. Also today I'm using a Mac. If you have a PC, that's fine. Just remember that when I say to use the command key on the Mac, that's the control key. So with both of our images pulled up here, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to get the one, uh, get both of these images into one file. So I'm going to start by selecting the good foreground image here. I'm going to hit con or command A and you see I get the marching ants going all the way around. I've selected the entire image. Next uh, is to hit command C to copy everything to the clipboard. Then I'm going to go over here to the image that has the good sky in it and I'm going to hit command V. And what I've done here, if you look down in the layer uh, window down here, I've created a layer on top of the background in this one file. If I turn off that foreground layer I just created, you can see the good sky image behind. With that, this is the only file we're going to need, so I'm going to make it big here so that I can see the entire uh, the entire screen, have one big canvas, I can see the whole image to work on it. The next step is to actually create the layer mask. In order to do this, we need to first select the layer that we want to put the mask on, in this case, layer one that we just created. We'll select that. Then we go down to the bottom of the layer menu and there's a button called Add Layer Mask. We'll click that. What we've done now is we've added a layer mask to layer one. The layer mask is actually the tool that makes the magic happen in exposure blending. So let's talk a little bit about how a layer mask works. Now we pasted this layer of the foreground uh, image on top of the background image or the sky image. If I were to click just on the layer itself and let's say I use the color black and I were to start painting on here, you, you'll notice that as I paint on here it's changing everything to black because I'm using the black color. I'm modifying the actual elements in this layer. I'll undo that. If I'm going to use the layer mask on the other hand and use black as well, we'll use the black color, something different happens. As, as I start painting you can see what I'm actually doing is revealing what's happening underneath. In other words, this layer here. I'm exposing or revealing the background layer into the foreground layer. If I were to change my color to white and do the same thing and start painting, you'll see that I'm now revealing that top layer again. So it works almost like an eraser to get rid of everything that I just did. I'm going to go back and delete all this because we don't want all of this mess in here. But that's how a layer mask works. It allows you to paint on the foreground layer and reveal what's happening underneath. So let's get started with the brushing. Uh, first thing we want to do is obviously select a brush tool. So we'll select the brush tool from the menu on the left. Now the brush tool is critical to making this image as realistic as possible. When we're doing our exposure blending technique, the trick is to make sure that your viewer can't see where you actually did your brushing. If you can pick out where the brush strokes are, it becomes uh, much less of a believable image. So the setting the brush tool initially is very important. So let's start by pulling our brush uh, options down. 
I want some. I want a brush size first of all that's fairly large. You can see how big the sky is. I've got a pretty small brush. I want to set something up probably around. I'm going to just select 600. That should be a good size. Yeah, that's a good size right there. The next thing I want to set is the hardness. What the hardness does is it tells the brush how feathered the edge will be. We want it to be very feathered. We don't want a defined edge to the brush. So I'm going to set that at zero. So we got a fairly large brush and it's a very soft brush at the same time. So let's go with those two uh, settings right there. The next is our pasted in our flow. These are going to be ter determine what our footprint is as far as how quickly and how much effect each brush stroke is going to have. I want something that's pretty small. So I'm going to start by setting my flow at 10% and that should give me a pretty uh, easy, small, simple flow. And let's just start painting. As I start painting here, actually I'm going to set my brush to black first and then I'm going to start painting and as you see as I start brushing across the sky you can see I'm slowly revealing the good sky underneath. You notice I'm not getting too close to the horizon I'm just going really slow across the top here exposing a little bit at a time that sky underneath. Now you'll notice this is pretty slow it's not a hundred percent all at one time we want to gradually do this and the reason this is important is is it will make your brush strokes much less obvious to your viewer and there you go I've pretty much exposed most of the sky just by doing that now you think we're done but we're not quite yet there's one more thing that I want to point out you'll notice that there's a lot of color in the sky there's also color down here in the foreground in areas like this plus we've also got some some uh, obvious spots here where we've got a little overexposure happening that's because in the original image of this foreground the sky was very bright and that was reflected in the foreground so we need to fix some of that a little bit we can use the exposure blending techniques to do the same thing so I want to expose or reveal some of that background image even in this foreground but I want to do it a little bit less gradual so I'm going to take my flow and I'm going to change it to about five percent ten percent then I'm going to go in and we'll start with these color areas I'm just going to kind of what I call just kiss these areas a little bit same thing up here and even in these areas here where it's overexposed a bit I'm going to just hit these a little bit so that we get a more gradual look to how these things are revealed it balances out the scene and makes it look just a little bit more realistic than it would otherwise. And there you go. That's a very basic exposure blending technique. I have to point out that this particular composition is pretty simple. You'll notice that the horizon is very straight. There is not a real, there's not a lot of trees protruding up in here, not a lot of things you gotta work around in order to make this happen. So this is a fairly basic uh, scene. Next we're going to talk a little bit about a more advanced procedure where you actually have to work around some objects, uh, make it a little bit more complicated than what this basic scene is. Now here's a little bit more of a complicated scene. As you can see we've got, uh, we've got some rocks here, we've got a lot of trees protruding into the sky, some of them have leaves, some of them don't. A little bit more complicated uh, blending technique is to be required to make this particular composition work. Now this particular scene is of a moonrise, not a sunrise, so you, it's a little bit deceiving. You'd think with the moon that uh, it wouldn't have the high dynamic range problems that a sun or a, like a dawn or a sunrise or a sunset type of a scene would have. But it is deceiving. The moon actually creates some of the same havoc with dynamic range that the sun can. It's a very bright uh, object in a very dark surrounding. And so we have to do some of the same techniques with the moonrise as we would with the sunrise. Now I've already got this file set up. I've got uh, my top layer here is my image exposed for the foreground. So we've got good in the detail in the front. Underneath it I've got my shot that was exposed for the bright area or the sky this particular picture has all the color in it. So our, our goal here now, if I step back and look at this scene, is I want to get uh, those wonderful colors in the sky up here without sacrificing the foreground detail. Now this is going to be a little bit more complicated. We can kind of see the horizon here. If I turn off and go to the background, you can see a little better. You can actually see the horizon here on Lake Superior. This is actually the Temperance River going into Lake Superior. You can see a little bit of the horizon, but it's not real definable, so we're not too concerned with that. What we are concerned about is we want to have this detail here, but we want to have this color here. So this transition here is going to be the most critical part. We want to gradually uh, do this blending here until we get the wonderful colors up here. Plus, we also want to gradually do stuff around the trees in order to get the sky to come through. Now this is a very delicate procedure. It's going to take a little bit of patience and very good technique with the brush. So let's start out by selecting layer one. 
creating our layer mask. So we have a layer mask, make sure that's selected. Make sure we have black as our color. I'm gonna select my brush tool. I'm gonna to start out again with that 600. And I'm gonna start out first, we're gonna start out with 5% on the flow. And I'm gonna start out down here at the bottom. Uh, we also, I should make point out, we wanna make sure that hardness is set at zero. I'm gonna start out here at the bottom and just slowly start revealing some of this area around these rocks. I wanna make sure that we do this gradually, that we don't get too uh, gung-ho with this. Now you'll notice that uh, I'm trying to stay away from those trees as much as possible. I don't wanna to get too close. And the reason is if I go over the trees too quickly and with too much, they're gonna black, blacken out and it's gonna, they're gonna look very much underexposed. I don't wanna do that, so I'm kinda of going in and out around of them a little bit. And again, I'm starting out towards the bottom because this is the more delicate area and I'm gradually just re revealing some of the wonderful sky underneath here. But I wanna do this gradual so that it looks believable. So a little bit at a time as I work my way up here. And once I get this foreground area done, I can start working on the sky. So there we go with that. Now, I'm gonna go in and go around some of these trees a little bit. Now you notice I'm still keeping with the five, I'm not at 10% flow, I'm gonna keep it at five. I am darkening some of these trees, that's okay. A little darkening isn't gonna be a problem. Uh, I just don't want too much darkening. A little bit at a time, and I'll start working through the top here and get some of that exposed. All right, I'm gonna up my flow a little bit now. I'm gonna change it to 10%, and that'll make things happen a little bit faster so we're not sitting here brutally waiting for uh, me to get done with this procedure. And again, I'm being careful around the trees. I don't wanna get, get it too dark. I don't want those trees to end up black. So I'm slowly revealing what I want. The finished product here is probably not gonna be 100% of that background revealed. I'm not gonna have the full uh, dark uh, image that's back there. If I notice here, if I turn it off right now, you see that dark image is a lot darker than what I'm ultimately revealing. But I need something that's believable. I don't need something that's dark. What the, what the goal of exposure blending is, is to make your scene look the way that it did in real life. In order to do that, sometimes you have to do things a little sneaky and sometimes you may, maybe in some circumstances, like I had to do in this particular scene, I actually had to make that background a little bit darker in the initial exposure when I was taking that shot than what I knew I was gonna end up exposing in the foreground in the final image. That way I know that my trees aren't gonna be completely underexposed and be completely dark. If you look when I turn this front one off, look how dark these trees are, they're almost black. I don't want that. I want them to have some detail in them. And so I actually overexposed or underexposed that sky a little bit so I have something more to work with and not have to reveal the whole thing. And there you go. Much more believable image than what uh, it would be without. In this scene now the dynamic range is much more balanced and we were able to accommodate a lot of this complicated detail around here. But patience was involved as well. I have to go in here and do everything a little bit gradually. And that patience is a virtue in this uh, particular scenario. You want to make sure that you do things gradually and reveal your artistic vision a little bit at a time. That's exposure blending in a nutshell. I've given you a very basic example of how to use this tool as well as what I would classify as an intermediate tool. Uh, there are much more advanced ways of using this powerful tool. Some folks use what's referred to as luminosity masks, where you can actually mask off or zero in on a particular luminosity or color in a scene and just work on that. Those are much more advanced skills than what I was able to cover today, and that requires a much longer tutorial. My goal today was to give you some basic tools to get this working in your photography. This hopefully will open up a world of possibilities for you, and I hope you'll find a way to include it in your art.